हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इजी साइंस यूट्यूब चैनल सो आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड सो बिफोर गोइंग टू द क्लास प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू इजी साइंस यूट्यूब चैनल एंड क्लिक द बेल आइकॉन सो दैट यू विल नेवर मिस एन अपडेट फ्रॉम माय चैनल एंड प्लीज शेयर विथ योर फ्रेंड्स इफ यू लाइक माई चैनल शेयर विथ योर फ्रेंड्स so let's start our class today so today i am going to discuss about nutrition the food supplying system biology topic this is nutrition food supplying system so we'll discuss the class generally food is needed by all the living organisms because we get energy from the food we eat right so and it's needed for growth and repair of the tissues also and even food is necessary to maintain the body temperature also so and we eat a variety of substances as food <coughs> when like we start from single cellular organisms like amoeba to multicellular organisms like human body a variety of substances were taken as food like even within the human body also the cells requires a wide variety of substances as food to carry out their functions like we have three different types of macronutrients called carbohydrates proteins fats which have different functions carbohydrates are energy giving food proteins are necessary for growth and repair of tissues fats are necessary for protection and maintain body temperature also so even within the human body also every cell needs a different variety of food to carry out its functions so the mode of acquiring food every organism has its own mode of nutrition mode of taking food so the mode of nutrition the mode of taking food is termed as nutrition and it's different from organism to organism so we have mainly two types of nutrition like in lower classes also we have studied that is autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition autotrophic nutrition means that means these two are the most important like main types of nutrition autotrophic nutrition means the organism prepare its own food depending on inorganic substances like carbon dioxide water sunlight chlorophyll it prepare its own food such type of nutrition we called it as autotrophic mode of nutrition and the second one is heterotrophic nutrition organisms which depend on plants and other animals for their nutrition are termed as heterotrophs and such type of nutrition is termed as heterotrophic mode of nutrition so in this class we are discussing about autotrophic nutrition so i already said autotrophs are the organisms which are capable of synthesizing their own food by using solar energy here light energy means sunlight and it acquires nutrients like mineral soils and water from the soil as well as some gases from the atmosphere also they are capable of like autotrophs are capable of producing complex carbohydrates compounds like carbohydrates proteins and lipids lipids are nothing but fats from very simple substances these compounds produced by autotrophic plants carbohydrates proteins fats which are produced by the autotrophic plants are utilized for the organisms to provide energy for themselves and even for the remaining living organisms which are present on this earth so the most of the food we eat like human beings or different animals are eating that come from plants only even human beings are dependent on animals those animals are dependent on plants that's why in all the life processes photosynthesis is considered as the basic life process and plants are considered as the universal producers food providers or producers we call it as because we have different types of life processes to carry out our life in a very effective way like 
the life processes include photosynthesis right respiration transportation excretion reproduction we have different types of life processes are they in all the life processes photosynthesis is considered as the basic life process because remaining life processes has to be carried out we need food because we need energy we obtain energy from the food we are obtaining or we are getting food from the process photosynthesis only if photosynthesis is not there then the remaining life processes will not be there that's why photosynthesis is considered as the basic life processes and plants are capable of producing their own food or synthesizing their own food and that process we called it as photosynthesis as plants are preparing their own food and providing food to all the living organisms present in this universe that's why plants are called as the universal food providers for all the living organisms so the equation photosynthesis equation that was widely used is formulated by the scientist c b van neel because we have discussed about this scientist in class 7 that the mass of the plant has increased that obtained from the soil only an activity was provided by cb van neel and he gave the equation the basic equation for photosynthesis and what was his opinion is for each molecule of carbohydrate formed one molecule of water and one molecule of oxygen is produced for every carbohydrate formed during the process of photosynthesis one molecule of water and one molecule of oxygen is produced though photosynthesis is a very complex process we use the simple equation so here i am showing the equation that is 6 co2 plus 6 h2o plus light energy gives rise to sugar that is c6h12o6 plus 6 o2 this is the initial equation that was proposed by cb van neel carbon dioxide water and the light was utilized by the plant to gives rise to carbohydrates this is the process of photosynthesis which is a very complex process but that was expressed in a very simple equation so van neel first worked out on purple sulfur bacteria and found that light plays a sunlight plays a very specific role in photosynthesis like if you observe during the process of photosynthesis water is utilized but cb van neel utilized hydrogen sulfide as a starting material instead of water he used hydrogen sulfide so during the process of photosynthesis sulfur is evolved as water is not there h2o is not there if water is present oxygen is liberated but he used hydrogen sulfide so sulfur is evolved later he envisioned a similar process of photosynthesis in plants and proposed the above mentioned equation like this equation was proposed by cb van neel by his activity later look after cb van neel robert hill has showed that oxygen is released from water during the process of photosynthesis that's why robert hill changed the equation like this that is 6 co2 plus 12 h2o gives rise to c6 h12o6 plus 6 h2o plus 6 o2 is liberated so this is the equation for photosynthesis which is widely accepted till today also right now uh, this is uh, an experiment called starch test it is called starch test and you have done this starch test in class 7th also right but this is uh, not the test which we have done in class 7th because we have used a boiled potato right or rice boiled rice in class 7th starch test but now we are using a leaf for starch test you know leaves are green in color right 
So leaves are considered as the food factories of a plant because the process of photosynthesis takes place inside the leaf. So leaves are considered as the food factories of the plant. So to do this activity, what are the materials required? So here we are observing some materials, right? So a beaker with water, a green color leaf, a test tube with ethanol. Ethanol means ethyl alcohol or else you can use methyl alcohol also. That can be generally called as methylated spirit. So we use the word methylated spirit. So Bunsen, Bunsen burner is required, tripod stand and wire gaze is needed. So these are the materials required for conducting this lab activity. So what is our aim? To show that starch is present on the leaf. That is our aim and these are the materials required. So let's go for the procedure. What is the procedure we will follow to do this lab activity? <clears throat> the procedure is first we have to take a leaf which is very thin. Right. You know that the leaves are green in color because they contain a green color pigment called chlorophyll. Because in class 7th also we have studied, in your lower sections also you have studied that the leaves are green in color because they contain a green color pigment called chlorophyll. Right. So we have to select a very thin leaf and keep the leaf in a test tube where the test tube is filled with either ethyl alcohol or methyl alcohol and take the test tube and keep the test tube in the beaker which contains water. Now keep the beaker on the tripod stand and start heating the beaker. Right. After some time you observe that like after some time of boiling you observe that slowly see did you observe this? Slowly the color of the leaf was changing, right? So now the color of the leaf has totally changed. That means the chlorophyll was removed, colorless. Now the leaf was colorless means the pigment was removed, the chlorophyll pigment. Now take out the leaf and spread the leaf in the petri dish. This is called petri dish and we add 2 to 3 drops of tincture iodine to this leaf and the leaf turns, see identify the color, it was turning to blue black color. So this is the procedure of this lab activity. So what we observed in this lab activity, we observed the leaf turns into, by adding 2 to 3 drops of tincture iodine, the leaf turns into blue-black color. So, the blue-black color indicating that the leaf contains starch. Right. So, this is about the lab activity. Right. Now, here I will write. So, what questions can be asked in this lab activity? You know that generally a lab activity can be asked. Right, that conduct a lab activity to show that starch is present on the leaf. That's a very direct question. Now, here some points are there. Like before going to starch test, like in class 7, directly we took the boiled rice in the test tube and add 2 to 3 drops of tincture iodine or boiled potato. It turns into blue black color. That was a direct test. Right. But here what we have done before going to the test, the leaf was boiled in methylated spirit. And the second thing is we didn't directly boil the test tube by holding the test tube with the help of a test tube holder on Bunsen burner. We kept the test tube inside the beaker which contains water and we started heating the beaker directly we didn't burn the test tube or we didn't heat the test tube right so what is the reason so we have to like there is a chance of asking questions in this concept like why we have boiled the leaf in methylated spirit why the leaf was boiled in methylated spirit 
why the leaf was boiled in methylated spirit so this is the question so the reason is the leaf was green in color because it contains a green color pigment called chlorophyll if chlorophyll is present starch test is not possible the leaf do not turn into blue black color and you cannot identify whether starch is prepared or not in order to do starch test first chlorophyll has to be removed in order to remove the chlorophyll we have the we have boiled the leaf in the methylated spirit so that's the reason why we have boiled the leaf before conducting starch test and the second one is the beaker like the test tube containing the methylated spirit along with the leaf was kept in a beaker and the beaker was heated what is the reason why the beaker was heated because spirit methylated spirit or ethyl alcohol they are organic substances they are combustible that means they can burn if you directly heat the test tube with methyl which is having the methylated spirit like it reaches its ignition temperature and it starts burning so to avoid that we have kept the test tube with methylated spirit and the leaf inside the beaker and we started heating the beaker along with the water this is the reason so after removing chlorophyll we have done starch test the leaf was spread in a petri dish and add 2 to 3 drops of tincture iodine turns into blue black color showing that the leaf contains starch so this is about starch test so this is confirming that this lab activity was confirming that leaves are the food factories of the plant leaves are preparing food for the plants that's why leaves are considered as the food factories of the plant right the next one so this is the famous experiment which was done by joseph priestley you know he discovered oxygen and the gas was named as oxygen by lavoisier right so joseph priestley's experiment is a bell jar experiment commonly we called it as a bell jar experiment so what he has done in his experiment is so he took a burning candle and a rat and he have covered it with a bell jar glass made up of glass because we have to observe right that's why he used a glass bell jar the bell jar made up of a glass like soon after closing the candle and the rat inside the glass bell jar we identified that the candle has put off and the rat also feeling suffocation that is difficulty in breathing right so in the next experiment what he used he used a potted plant also along with the candle and the rat and again he covered with a glass bell jar surprisingly the candle did not put off and even the rat also not feeling any suffocation so by this experiment priestley proposed that what the burning substances and the respired organisms are removing that was again bring back by the green plants so he identified that that was the gas that was removed by the respired organisms was restored by the plants and this is the experiment done by joseph priestley right so uh, next we have another lab activity like the equation robert hill equation we have identified that for the process of photosynthesis we need carbon dioxide water chlorophyll and sunlight right so how can you prove that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis so to prove that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis Uh, we have a lab activity this lab activity we called it as moles half leaf experiment so this activity we called it as moles half leaf experiment so uh, what are the 
necessities for this what are the materials required for this experiment our aim is to prove that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis so what are the materials required means we have to take a potted plant so this is the potted plant so before going to the experiment we have to keep this potted plant in dark for 48 hours so after 48 hours bring the potted plant to the sunlight and select one leaf from the potted plant okay and take a glass bottle and introduce or keep potassium hydroxide solution or pellets like in form of liquid or in the form of solid you have to keep potassium hydroxide inside the glass bottle right now insert half of the leaf into the glass bottle and half of the leaf under the sunlight after that close the glass bottle with the help of a cork inside the cork only we have introduced the half leaf inside the glass bottle and half leaf was outside the glass bottle and leave this apparatus for 2 to 3 hours and after that remove the leaf from the potted plant and again conduct starch test you know how you will conduct starch test again again no need to explain how to conduct starch test so for every time if you want to do starch test for a leaf you have to remove the chlorophyll right that's why it is colorless right so starch test means you will after uh, removing chlorophyll you will add 2 to 3 drops of tincture iodine so what we observed is the half of the leaf the part of the leaf which is outside of the glass bottle was turning into blue black color and the part of the leaf which is present inside the glass bottle do not turns into blue black color right this is the activity lab activity we call it as moles half leaf experiment in this experiment we have to prove that we want to prove that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis right Let's just discuss what we have used in this lab activity and what type of questions may ask or may come from this lab activity in exam purpose right so initially before going to experiment we have kept the leaf uh, potted plant not the leaf we have kept the potted plant in dark for 48 hours so what is the reason before going to experiment or before going to conduct the experiment we have kept the potted plant in dark for 48 hours what is the reason why we have kept the plant in dark for 48 hours so if you keep the plant in dark for 48 hours whatever starch it prepared will be utilized by the plant so there is no starch in the leaves of the potted plant because whatever it has prepared will be utilized because the potted plant is in dark for 48 hours so if it is in dark there is no photosynthesis because sunlight is very essential for the process of photosynthesis so whatever it already prepared that will be utilized by the plant so after 48 hours the potted plant the leaves of the potted plant do not have any starch left over right so that is the reason why we have kept the potted plant in dark for 48 hours so now so uh, some ex have conducted the same experiment without keeping the potted plant in dark for 48 hours what will happen this may ask such type of questions can be asked based on the concept some ex has done the same experiment without keeping the plant in dark for 48 hours what might be happen or what might be the result of this experiment so uh, remaining topics also like we discussed and you only answer this question the second one is we have taken a glass bottle and kept potassium hydroxide pellets or potassium hydroxide solution in aqueous form or in 
salt form we have used potassium hydroxide inside the glass bottle what is the reason why we have used this potassium hydroxide see potassium hydroxide will absorb the carbon dioxide present in the glass bottle because carbon dioxide is present in the atmosphere air air is a mixture of several gases where carbon dioxide is also present maybe the glass bottle contains some traces of carbon dioxide that can be absorbed by the potassium hydroxide that's why we have used potassium hydroxide right now third one uh, we have kept half of the leaf in the glass bottle where carbon dioxide is not available and half of the leaf was outside of the glass bottle where carbon dioxide is present and we have done the starch test. Half of the leaf which was present inside the glass bottle was colorless because we have boiled the leaf in methylated spirit before going to conduct the starch test and half of the leaf which is present outside of the glass bottle turns into blue black color showing that starch is prepared right now i i have asked a question that some x has done the experiment without keeping the plant in dark for 48 hours what might be the result the result is even the half of the leaf which is present inside the glass bottle also turns into blue black color and you cannot identify that Carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis because already the leaf has prepared starch. It has already stored starch and if you done the starch test, the total leaf turns into blue-black color where you use the tincture iodine. In all the places, the leaf turns into blue-black color. That's the reason before going to conduct the experiment, we have to keep the leaf in dark fur. We have to keep the potter plant in dark for 48 hours in order to identify that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. If you do not do this, you can't identify or you cannot explain that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. Right. So this is about moles half leaf experiment right next in Priestley's time Joseph Priestley experiment we have discussed scientists did not understand about energy but later on the much was discovered about it that is during the process of photosynthesis energy is absorbed in the form of sunlight so scientists did not understand if energy is released, like during the process of respiration, even in the chemical reactions also we have discussed that glucose will break down in the presence of oxygen to give rise to carbon dioxide and water vapor and a large amount of energy is liberated. That's why respiration is termed as exothermic reaction because energy is liberating, right? So in the yesterday class also we discussed that. So if energy is released when carbon dioxide and water is formed by combining oxygen with carbon and hydrogen that is carbon and hydrogen organic compound glucose combines with oxygen to give rise to carbon dioxide and water energy is released. Then what about the reverse? What about forming oxygen again and putting it back into the air? Scientists learn that the energy situation would also reverse. Oxygen formation would use up energy. Glucose breakdown and giving energy means while combining energy is absorbed. That means if the plants form oxygen like during the process of photosynthesis, oxygen is liberated as a byproduct. So plants are forming oxygen they have to in order to produce oxy oxygen they need energy so where does the energy come from the plant by absorbing energy only plants able to release oxygen how the plants will get energy so this was given by a Dutch scientist Jan Ingenhaus so he studied the way in which plants form oxygen that is nothing but photosynthesis and he was studying about photosynthesis and in the year 1779 he noticed that 
the process of photosynthesis will be happen only in the presence of light so he conducted an experiment with aquatic plants like hydrophytes we have hydrilla right so he has conducted an experiment and he observed during day time around the aquatic plants there were air bubbles surrounding the aquatic plants in bright sunlight small bubbles are formed around the green parts while in the dark they did not form the air bubbles are not formed and he tested the air bubbles the air bubbles are nothing but oxygen because you know what is the test for oxygen if you bring a burning matchstick the matchstick burns brightly because oxygen supports combustion so he has done this experiment and the process of photosynthesis will be takes place only in the presence of sunlight during night time the process cannot be happen because sunlight is absent and this was further confirmed by that is sunlight is necessary for the process of photosynthesis was confirmed by angelman in the 20th century like he detected the point of maximum rate of photosynthesis you know white light is a combination of seven different colors which we called it as webgr seven different colors right and he used a strand of algae because algae or green in color will perform photosynthesis and he used some algae and the algae was exposed to the different colors of the light and he used some oxygen sensitive bacteria what do you mean by oxygen sensitive bacteria can able to detect the presence of oxygen and they were present more in the place where oxygen is present and he found that this oxygen sensitive bacteria are crowded around the red and blue colors of the light so the maximum rate of photosynthesis takes place near red color and blue color of the light this led to more studies on effect of light on photosynthesis the role of different colored compounds called pigments i said the leaves are green in color because they contain a green color pigment called chlorophyll but chlorophyll is not the only pigment in the plants there are other pigment also what do you mean by a pigment pigment means a substance which was able to absorb the energy and we can utilize energy from that substance it can able to absorb and it can be utilized such substances are termed as pigments right so this is a lab activity where we want to prove that light is necessary for the process of photosynthesis already like jan uh, injan house and angelman have proved that and this was a small experiment to prove that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis and the, again same thing right we have to take a potted plant our aim is to prove that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis right and again we have taken a potted plant and before going to conduct the experiment you have to remember the potted plant has to be kept in dark for 48 hours so after 48 hours bring the potted plant to the sunlight and select a thin leaf from the potted plant take a black color chart paper right so black color chart paper and cover some part of the leaf with black color chart paper and leave the potted plant in sunlight for 2 to 3 hours now take out the leaf from the potted plant after 2 to 3 hours again boil the leaf in methylated spirit to remove the chlorophyll now spread the leaf in the petri dish add 2 to 3 drops of tincture iodine on the leaf like or dip the leaf in the tincture iodine so what we identify is the part of the leaf that was covered with the black color strip cannot able to turn like or cannot able to give blue black color the part of the leaf which is not covered with the black color chart paper turns into blue black color because the part of the leaf that was covered with the black color chart paper cannot be exposed to sunlight 
so if it is not exposed to sunlight we cannot able to that that part of the leaf cannot able to perform photosynthesis so starch is not prepared so the leaf do not turn blue black color at that position so by this activity we can identify that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis right so here in this activity uh, what questions they may ask means uh, why the part of the plant why the part of the plant covered with black color chart paper covered with black chart paper do not turn or do not give blue black color with iodine so what might be the reason because the part of the leaf that was covered with the chart paper cannot be exposed to the sunlight so sunlight is absent so food is not prepared that's why the part of the leaf do not turns into blue black color with the help of tincture iodine right next next this is the lab activity that shows that oxygen is liberated during the process of photosynthesis liberated during photosynthesis so so what are the materials required we need an aquatic plant that is hydrilla right and this is a thistle funnel and this is a test tube and this is a beaker right these are the materials required and for this lab activity no need to keep the plant in dark for 48 hours right because that was an aquatic plant you can't keep it in dark for 48 hours that will die so we have to take a, a aquatic plant hydrilla in a thistle funnel and the thistle funnel was inverted and kept inside the beaker which contains water right now take a test tube right and take a test tube and invert the test tube even in the test tube also you have to take water and invert the test tube over the thistle funnel we have inverted the test tube over the thistle funnel and keep the whole apparatus in sunlight that means proper sunlight is there you have to keep this arrangement in a place where proper sunlight is available and leave the apparatus for 2 to 3 hours and after 2 to 3 hours we observe that the small air bubbles are formed inside the test tube and if you bring a burning matchstick near the test tube slightly open the test tube and bring a burning matchstick the matchstick burns brightly shows that oxygen was liberated during the process of photosynthesis we didn't take any oxygen the test tube was initially filled with water you know if you invert the test tube over the thistle funnel some amount of water was removed from the test tube right so some water is left over and now the test tube was filled with oxygen if you bring a burning matchstick that burns brightly showing that oxygen is liberated during the process of photosynthesis this activity has done with an aquatic plant because we have kept the plant inside the water normal plant we cannot take because that plant cannot be kept inside the water right and here there are some precautions even writing lab activity you have to write some precautions also because now the test tube was filled with a gas oxygen you have to carefully remove the test tube because you know gas the particles are very far away from each other occupy a large space but in the small test tube now gas is present under high pressure so you have to carefully remove the test tube right because otherwise due to the pressure the test tube may breaks right so that is a laboratory precaution while doing this activity and you have to keep the arrangement in 
a place where proper sunlight is available right now engine house was wanted to find out more about the photosynthesis engine house explained that red and blue color light has more rate of these two colors at near these two colors of the light the rate of photosynthesis is higher that was discovered by engine house by using oxygen sensitive bacteria he proved that red and blue color of light near red and blue color of light the rate of photosynthesis is higher and he want to do more experiments about photosynthesis and he carried out several experiments also and after carrying several experiments he proposed that the only green plant parts throughout the plant it will not perform photosynthesis only the green color parts of the plants are able to carry out the process of photosynthesis that was given by engine house the green color parts of the plant you know they are chlorophyll they, sorry they are leaves the green color part of the plant are the leaves that's why leaves are known as food factories of the plant two scientists pelletier and cavendu they obtained an extract of the green colored substance from the leaf and they named it as chlorophyll see chloro which means green phil means leaf so they have extract the green colored substance called chlorophyll from the plant it was also found that chlorophyll is not the only pigment present in the plant there are other pigments also which we called it as carotenoids phycobilins even xanthophylls are also present here only two they have given even xanthophylls are also present so these all are pigments but why we are explaining that uh, photosynthesis will be takes place only in the presence of chlorophyll these pigments are also there but why we are explaining that photosynthesis will be takes place only in the presence of chlorophyll these pigments these are also we are seeing that pigments the pigments present in the leaf are chlorophyll even chlorophyll also we have two types of chlorophyll chlorophyll a chlorophyll b is present carotenoids are present xanthophylls are present phycobilins are present even though we are even though we are explaining that photosynthesis will be takes place only in the presence of chlorophyll what's the reason see these pigments are termed as like this carotenoids carotenoids phycobilins xanthophylls are termed as accessory pigments what they are called as they are called as accessory pigments so what do you mean by accessory pigments accessory pigments means they do not directly involve in the process of photosynthesis as i am explaining that they are pigments i already said what do you mean by a pigment the substance which can able to absorb the energy and provide the energy when it is needed whenever needed the substance can able to provide the energy which it has absorbed so i am explaining that these are also pigments but these are termed as accessory pigment chlorophyll is considered as main pigment the reason is carotenoids phycobilins and xanthophylls also absorb the solar energy but they do not directly participate in the process of photosynthesis whatever energy they absorb they provide this or they give or transfer this energy to the chlorophyll chlorophyll directly participate in the process of photosynthesis that's why these pigments are termed as accessory pigments and you know there are some plants which are not green in color like you have a doubt whether they are able to perform photosynthesis or not some are yellow color some are red color leaves are there are they able to perform photosynthesis or not are they autotrophs or not yes they are autotrophs and yes they perform photosynthesis because 
they are the accessory pigments that was expressed on the leaf even chlorophyll is also present they will absorb the solar energy and transfer the energy to the chlorophyll and chlorophyll directly participate in the process of photosynthesis so that's why they are termed as accessory pigments i hope you understand accessory pigments right so this we have discussed in this class so the remaining class will discuss the remaining topic will discuss in the next class i hope you all like the video please like share and subscribe to easy science youtube channel and if you have any doubts you can ask me in comment section thank you everyone